Back to Star and Movie Recaps, everyone. I'm going to show you Symbol, a 2009 comedy, fantasy, and mystery movie. Beware of spoilers. A Japanese man awakening in a white, empty room with no doors or windows and no apparent ceiling is wearing very colorful pajamas. When he gets closer to one of the walls to take a closer look, he notices something odd protruding from it a protuberance in the form of a male member. After poking it a few times, he presses the tip, causing hundreds of giggly baby angels to emerge from the walls and floor. They remain there for a brief moment before returning the way they came. The fact that all of their members are now protruding from the wall and floor is one thing they do leave behind, though. This stage is referred to as learning. The man screams in terror as he sniffs the finger he used to press the oddly shaped button and then cries out and begs for assistance from anyone nearby, but to no avail. He decides to start pressing the buttons to see what happens, and each time he does, a different unrelated object, from a tiny toothbrush to a large vase, falls into the space. He tests this idea on one specific button which results in him receiving a large collection of chopsticks by pressing the same button again. But when he presses the button next to the chopstick one, a small cart emerges from the wall and strikes him in the legs. His amusement is short-lived. He cries out in pain, and the next button he presses changes into a butt that sprays gas in his face. After hours, the man has gathered a vast array of unrelated items in the space, and when he throws the ball at the wall, it activates a sushi-giving button. He is thrilled by this because he has been growing hungry, but he is also aware that he is missing soy sauce. He repeatedly presses one of the buttons until he has a pile of sushi in front of him, but still no sauce after asking his captors for it but. As usual, getting no response. After giving up, the man begins to eat the sushi, which he finds to be quite good, after finishing the last piece, he presses the button for more, and when a bottle of soy sauce finally arrives, he becomes enraged. He stomps the bottle out of the way indignantly and presses another button to produce a set of vintage 3D glasses. The man is happy because he believes he may have found the solution when he puts them on and manages to see a baby angel pointing at his member. But when he presses that specific button, all he sees is a countdown and a huge butt rising above him, passing gas on top of him. After reading five volumes of a manga he finds to be very entertaining, he presses a button to get the sixth volume, but instead receives the seventh. He presses other buttons out of frustration and receives the numbers eight and nine, but not six. But the final button he presses holds a significant surprise for him. It unlocks a portion of the wall that conceals a door. In his excitement over his discovery, the man fails to remember which button actually unlocks the exit. When he picks one at random, an African tribesman startles him by darting from wall to wall. The next one causes water to fall on his head. He finds that the third one is what he needs, so when the wall opens, he rushes to it only to have it close in his face. His second attempt also fails, at which point he realizes that the door remains open so long as the member tip is lowered. He then begins experimenting with various methods to accomplish this. He starts by pressing his foot into the position of the runner. He then attempts to hit it with a flyswatter from a far distance, in the hopes that the extra distance will shorten his running time. None of these are effective, neither are pulling it with a jumping rope or blowing air at it. After pressing the button, he then intended to climb onto the cart and push it, but after a few failed attempts, he realizes he is powerless to stop it. He must figure out how to keep the button tipped down. The man decides that he needs to fill the enormous vase to make it heavier after placing it on top of the button, which still manages to stick up again. He first tries the water button, but it serves no purpose because no matter how hard he tries to direct the water, it always falls directly on him. The vase is filled with sushi in his subsequent attempt, but it becomes so heavy that he is unable to lift it. 
The man is forced to use chopsticks to remove a large amount of sushi one piece at a time because the vase's neck is too small for him to reach through with his hand. Later, once he's far enough away, he just about manages to pick up the vase, so he does that and moves it closer to the buttons. When he arrives, he finds himself having to set the vase on the ground because he has forgotten which button it was once more. As he attempts one button, the African tribesman emerges and unintentionally bumps into the base, breaking it in half. This pushes the man over the edge, and as he freaks out and starts yelling non-stop, he finds the appropriate button and starts covering it with sushi. Of course, this also fails, and the tiny member appears among the rice. The man then tries taping over the button, then taping over a steel plate, but nothing works. The man wants to brush his teeth, so he presses a button to get water after taking some painkillers to treat the pain, the door's repeated blows to his back caused in taking a nap as well. However, this button was the incorrect one, and it shows a rope falling from the ceiling. This instantly lifts his spirits because it gives him a fresh idea for a strategy. He opens the door, swings across the room using the rope, and makes it before the door shuts. Sadly, he finds that the door behind the false wall is locked when he tries to open it. In frustration, he kicks the wall, activating one of the buttons, revealing the key floating in the middle of the room. He returns to the room just in time before the door closes, but it still manages to hit him on the way out. The man needs to figure out a way to keep the key in the room and the door open because it disappears when the button perks out once more. But first, he has to locate the button once more after getting sidetracked and misplacing it. He selects a button by roughly estimating where his foot would have landed if he had kicked the wall, only to have a dog appear from the wall and start barking at him. The next button experiences the same problem, but fortunately, the third attempt is successful. The man walks backward and grabs a piece of sushi, which he brings back to the wall to mark the right button with while maintaining his eyes and a pointing hand on it. But when he presses it, the dog emerges once more. This time, he locates the button more quickly and moves forward with his plan. He creates the rope and swings on it to reach the various buttons, but it is still sufficient. As he lands on the floor, he notices a plunger he had obtained from one of the numerous buttons and has an idea for a quick fix. He can use the plunger to push against the wall and move farther. After one unsuccessful attempt, the plan goes off without a hitch. He is able to reach the door before it closes by pressing the door button while swinging on the rope and pushing himself with the plunger. He doesn't waste any time and quickly turns the lock after inserting the key, but when he tries to open the door, a nasty surprise awaits him. The door also has a separate lock on the top that needs three numbers to open it. As the door closes on him as he rushes out, he is struck by it. Frustrated, he throws the plunger at the opposite wall, which triggers the release button for the African tribesman. He notices something as he follows him and deduces that the three numbers painted on his forehead must be the combination he needs. The man performs the entire swinging on the rope and jumping maneuver three times, once for each number to be entered, because he has a limited amount of time behind the door. The third time, he stays put and pushes extra hard to open the door, which is a little bit stuck. When he succeeds in doing so, the wall fragment behind him closes, trapping him and denying him the space he needs to fully open the door. Devastated, the man slumps to the ground and sobs as he recalls all the enjoyment he had with the items he had obtained from the buttons. Even though he was locked up there, he had space to move around and access to entertainment, and now he regrets not appreciating what he had while he had it. His face is suddenly touched by a breeze that is coming from the left wall. When he touches it, he immediately notices a crack that indicates it is a fake. He doesn't waste any time and quickly opens the panel before bolting out, arriving at a shadowy hallway not far away. He seems to be running in circles for an eternity, and when he finally enters a room, his hair is longer and the hues of his pajamas have changed. 
There are adult angels in this room, instead of baby ones, who also disappear into the wall and only leave their members exposed to serve as buttons. This room is also empty, and the door he enters immediately closes. This stage is referred to as practice. Little Antonio's family is concerned because his father, a wrestler known as Escargot Man, is acting more subdued than usual in a Mexican city. His wife speculates that it might be because his next opponent is much younger than he is, but the grandfather insists that experience, not youth, is what counts. The Escargot man is picked up by his daughter's sister Karen in her truck, and she drives him to the wrestling arena so he can begin getting ready early, which includes dressing differently and praying to the Virgin. Antonio is being called a weak loser at school by his peers, who tease him for betting on Escargot Man. As the start of the match draws near, Sister Karen picks up Antonio and their grandfather in her van once more and drives them to see Escargot Man in action. However, Karen leaves and just before the show starts, Antonio and his grandfather find some of the last seats for themselves. Super Demon and Tequila Joe's team, the Northern Tough Ones, are the first to enter the ring. Then Escargot Man and Silver Eagle, playing as the team Kiss Me A Lot, enter the scene. When the Northern Tough Ones fight him collectively rather than one-on-one, -on -one, Silver Eagle, who enters the fray as the first player for his team, quickly loses the upper hand. Escargot Man refuses to participate in the melee despite their repeated requests, and it isn't until Silver Eagle pulls a prank on Super Demon and Tequila Joe that he is finally able to flee. Escargot Man is also quickly defeated. The man in the mysterious room presses a button just as his opponent is about to strike him with a chair, causing Escargot Man to magically extend his neck and strike both opponents in the head, rendering them both unconscious. The man keeps pressing the same button when nothing happens in the room, which draws his attention. As a result, Escargot Man eliminates Silver Eagle, the referee, Antonio, and even the bell. The man tries various buttons after getting no response. During a Los Angeles concert, one makes the lead singer of a metal band breathe fire above his audience. The second causes a Chinese man to growl at his own dogs, and the third causes a Russian magician to fail his trick when he tries to make his assistant vanish. When the man notices some light coming from above, he realizes that, in contrast to the previous room, there is no ceiling, and he can see the angels circling in the distance just as he is about to give up. He makes the decision to try something completely different this time. He will use the member buttons to climb the walls rather than pressing them. It works, and every time he presses a button with his hands or his feet, something extraordinary takes place on Earth, from flowers to an elephant to die. The effects get more complicated as he ascends. They no longer just involve nature alone, but also humanity and both small and large things, such as a toaster and a moon landing. By the time he reaches the top, the man's beard and hair have both grown to be quite long, and he no longer needs to hold on to the wall. With the ability to float like an angel and the knowledge he has gained from the training in the earlier rooms, he embraces his role as God and starts purposefully selecting humanity's greatest hits rather than just pressing buttons at random. By the time he's finished, the walls have been replaced by feathers, and he's entered a glowing portal that leads to the final space. The continents are depicted on the walls of this one, and the man is about to press a sizable member button. This stage is referred to as future. 